The current extension of the concept of the unconscious to different levels, configuration and functioning of the mind is the result of decades of collective reflection on clinical work as well as on theory. Analysts today have a broader, more refined and complex knowledge of defensive and transformative processes and this has also led to an evolution in technique. The paper we present today is a combination of psychoanalytic theory and technique through two clinical cases that present complex articulations of spurious unconscious functional areas and modalities, alternately the repressed and the not repressed. This paper was published in the Italian Psychoanalytic Annual Issue 16 in 2022. The full text can be found on the publisher Raffaello Cortina's website. The link is available in this episode description. The full text also contains the extensive clinical portion that is not included in the following podcast. Stefano Bolognini is a psychiatrist and a training analyst of the Italian Psychoanalytic Society, of which he was a scientific secretary and president. After serving as a representative on the first IPA board, he became its president in 2013 and served in that role until 2017. He also founded the IPA Encyclopedic Dictionary of Psychoanalysis and is a member of the advisory board of the International Psychoanalytic University Berlin honorary member of the New York Contemporary Freudian Society and of the Los Angeles Institute and Society for Psychoanalytic Studies. Bolognini was a member of the editorial board of the International Journal of Psychoanalysis for 10 years and has published over 250 psychoanalytic works, both books and papers. I am Gaetano Pellegrini with Toxon Psychoanalysis, the IPA podcast devoted to topics published in the IPA Society journals and Congress debates worldwide, featuring the original voices of the authors. This podcast series, published by the International Psychoanalytical Association, is part of the activities of the IPA Communication Committee and is produced by the IPA podcast editorial team. Editing and post-production, Massimiliano Guerrieri, proofreading Elisabeth Danzi and Valentin Moscovici. To stay informed about the latest podcast releases, please sign up today. Hidden unconscious, buried unconscious, implicit unconscious. The need to extend the concept of the unconscious beyond the limits of the repressed unconscious has arisen above all from progress in clinical experience. We are more and more observing deep, non-represented areas or elements, the result of uncontained pre-subjective impacts, not endowed with meaning, not integrated, or not shared at the appropriate time with the present and reliable parental object or as the outcome of massive post-traumatic regressions in which the subject's central ego falls short of its own standards of functioning and becomes dramatically distracted in an acute manner, a regressive whole, with the loss of the capacities for representation, metaphor, and symbolization. Thus, unprecedented perspectives have been opened up for understanding both initial basic functional immaturity and the dysfunction caused in later periods by post-traumatic disorganization, destructoring of the ego. To the first scenario, shortcomings in the formative phase ab initio of the representational, metaphorical and symbolic functions, 
I would add the flourishing and necessary development in psychoanalysis of an orientation which privileges the unconscious as the site of creative developmental potentialities. This is not a case of merely finding the way to release the repressed from censorship or of reclaiming what has been dissociated or even banished far away in extra gravitational spaces outside the self. Rather, it is about allowing the unconceived, the never thought, the incomplete, the newly possible to germinate and flourish in the encounter and in the work that is done together. Many scholars of Bionian theory and practice are moving in this direction, especially by their endorsement of shared reverie. But other theoretical and clinical currents are also turning towards forms of psychic enrichment and expansion through the provision of basic functions that were deficient at the start of life. The temporary renewal of the necessary physiological fusionality, mirroring, beginning the capacity for play, and the gradual experience of the interpsychic are only some of the possible ways in which the analytic process can be channeled towards this proactive dimension, which certainly cannot be prescribed or even recommended pedagogically, but for which analysts can be educated and trained if they possess in embryo the personal qualities that will enable it. This extension of the concept of the unconscious is contributing to important broadenings of techniques, since there is now a consensus that these deficient areas need a more complex analytic function than the simple, descriptive, interpretative highlighting of configurations and developments by giving the patient an explanation or information. To pass co-experientially through extended primary states of the self that have been devastated or abandoned, to represent or revisit the traumatic incidents, and to develop a representational capacity all require an analytic co-presence of a different quality from the kind that ab externo adopts a dry technical role of merely observing and objectively interpreting. In some very severe cases, for example, when the analyst is called upon to share deeply in the experience of powerlessness that was the infant's and is still inside the patient, can be so overwhelming that it causes the analyst to despair both about the fate of the patient and the treatment, and about his or her professional self-esteem. And not infrequently, the simple perceptibility of this despair reveals itself to be unexpectedly healing. Certain patients, like certain infants, have an absolute need for the object to experience and not simply decipher what they are going through. And in such cases, there can be no psychoanalytic empathy without a measured and partial degree of sharing. Even registering an experience within the symbolic levels of the ego requires a protracted cohabitation and interpsychic cooperation in order to come into effect and be established the unvalidated infantile experience and the experience not formulated require acknowledgement from the caregiver if they are to gain access to consciousness. It is generally recognized today that the infantile experiences of the first two years of life are to be situated in the sphere of procedural memory managed by the amygdala, as the regulator of the emotions since the hippocampus, which is essential for the explicit memory system, does not achieve maturity until two years of age. 
For this reason, the study of implicit memory widens the concept of the unconscious and shifts it to a new place, from the realm of the repressed to the arena of biologically determined unawareness. I am here quoting the IPA Encyclopedic Dictionary of Psychoanalysis. Acquisitions like this explain analysts' growing interest in the contribution of the neurosciences. Although we are only just beginning to glimpse a usefulness in this that goes beyond the comforting confirmations of many psychoanalytic observations. I quote again from the same source. Many analysts find helpful to inform themselves of emerging discoveries pertaining to specific areas of psychoanalytic interest, like documented neurobiological correlates of early traumatic histories and their partial reversibility by psychoanalytic treatment. And thanks again to the vast body of clinical observations, there is an equal growth in the interest being paid to most basic forms of translation of unconscious representations into reflective and symbolized knowledge or insight, or from procedural coding to symbolic coding, primary process to secondary process, preverbal to verbal forms of thought, to new emphasis on allegedly non-conflicted, non-symbolized, implicit or procedural knowing. Again, this quote comes from the IPA Encyclopedic Dictionary. This is why today we are making efforts to explore pre-subjective states of the self, which would be hard for those not fully prepared for the world to comprehend or even imagine. And we are profoundly interested in the concept of enactment which many of us have recognized as the possible fourth via regia to the unconscious, after dream, the transference, and the counter-transfer. Three levels in clinical work with the unconscious. Although the conceptual distinction between the processes of repression, splitting, projection, pathological projective identification, foreclosure, and schizoid dissociation as you see, I am deliberately listing all these phenomena on a gradient of progressive distancing from the conscious integration of the central ego, has been perfected on the theoretical level in recent decades. The feeling is growing that in many cases they are less clearly distinguishable in clinical practice and that there is an increase in mixed pathological scenarios. See, for example, the highly complex portrayal of hysteric borderline psychotic forms in the historical classification by Meissner. I will present three clinical configurations whose classification might be disputed, but which, in my opinion, are well enough to characterized in this way. The first is a clinical case with a very marked neurotic quality. The second involves a massive post-traumatic functional regression. In the third scenario, I will describe a prevalence of the deeper structure implicit. We remind you that the extensive clinical portion of this paper can be downloaded for free, along with the entire text from the Italian publisher Raffaello Cortina's website, whose link appears in the written description of this episode. I am reserving the last lines of this essay simply to mention a further level of the unrepresented. I have maintained, and I am certainly not the first, that the greatest depths of our unconscious cannot be experienced in an integrated way, and still less can our central ego be conscious of them. Instead, they are sometimes deducible, as when we use large radio telescopes to look beyond our galaxy are observable with the interposition of a thick protective porthole 
as in deep submerged submarines. These may seem extravagant metaphors, but if we consider, for example, the unthinkability of a simple reaction formation by the patient who on a conscious level venerates a rival he would actually like to see dead, we can have an idea of the distance which separates him from the awareness of those psychic experiences and that constellation of fantasy. Hence the elementary technical criterion of not informing the patient on a cognitive level before the various components of her internal world have been manifested and rendered available are gradually taking their places in the scenario and on the way to integration so as to receive natural enough sense of sense that is comprehensible and subjectively hers, but not before this. The style of intra-psychic relating between parts of the self of each subject is typically an unconscious aspect because it reproduces and condenses in contact with his own self and then in inter modes with the other, the modes in which each of us has been treated or not treated by the object in the primary relationship, with the rare possibility in later phases of being involved in the process of re-imprinting a process which may be partially regenerated at certain moments in the analysis through the effect of regression, which restarts the game at great depth. And this is the most fascinating aspect for us analysts from a technical point of view. Today, in the context of the relationship between the subject's central ego and the self, And from a more complex perspective, we ask who is talking to whom and where from, and especially how. In that how are condensed the exploration, the experience in the session, and the hopefully integrated knowledge of a nuclear relational mode whose quality and configuration are implicit and would tend to remain unconscious for the subject. The depth and granularity of these unconscious models of functioning may not depend directly on traumas, but may be the automatic result of early hypercondensed constitutive processes. They often constitute the person's character forged in an early experience of treatment and are taken on and managed as implicit. In fact, Intra and inter alternate and combine ever more frequently in contemporary clinical reports with a sense of more comprehensible subterranean continuity between these two dimensions, which are destined to reveal themselves in various forms in the transfers until they produce more or less dramatic actions and enactments, and sooner or later it is to be hoped, interpretations, and in some cases, even measured, refined, wise, interpretative actions, interpret actions. And it is precisely there that the game is restarted.